Ian Rappaport back here on the show. How are you doing, Ian? You know, it's interesting, Rich. Like, I was sort of expecting craziness on Wednesday morning and Thursday morning, and I was, like, getting myself mentally prepared. Yep. And Monday went bonkers, and by Tuesday, deals were happening, uh, and I was not mentally ready for either of those things. <laughs> and then by Wednesday, it was like everyone was kind of settling in. And then by this morning, uh, people we've never heard of were taking visits. That's right. So uh, Ian Rappaport will be part of Free Agent uh, Forget About It on NFL Network to, uh, today at 1 Eastern Time. I mean – you should still tune in. I'm not, you know, I'm <laughs> That's great. Great sell. They're sitting there right up to Culver City. Can you can you talk it up a little better? So uh, what what is going on uh, in Minnesota right now? Who who have they brought in to try and add to that defense, Ian? Go for it. Yeah, Sheldon Richardson, uh, the former Jets star defensive tackle uh, mm. who was headed out to Seattle, and I think everyone, a lot of people really thought that he was going to re-sign in Seattle. Seattle thought that. Um there were definitely points in free agency when I was almost ready to say that, you know, he's expected to return there and they just never got a deal, never got it together. And now he's in Minnesota and, and he's gotten the good treatment. He's taken the jet. He's eaten lunch with Kirk cousins. He's taken a tour of the stadium in the city. This is winding and dining. And you only do this if you are legit interested and you think you have a chance to sign a guy. And, uh, to me, in my head, as I kind of keep track of all this, the Vikings were signing Kirk Cousins, and that's it. Uh, and all of a sudden, Richardson's market kind of fell to them, and they may sign him now. That would be remarkable. And also keep up with the Joneses in in in, uh, in Philadelphia, who added, you know, Haloti Nada, Michael yes. Bennett. I mean, the, every they're they're kind of, everyone at the top of the NFC flowchart. Uh, from last year is kind of retooling and, and adding just uh, the Rams being another such team. Um, but what is going on yeah. with Seattle though, Ian? I mean, uh, Richard Sherman was on Joe Thomas's podcast with, uh, with, uh, with Andrew Hawkins. And I think Brockman, you're going to have that later on in the, the news update as now that he's out of Seattle, uh, pulling back the curtain a little bit, that's to be expected when a team, when a player leaves via free agency, certainly to a rival uh, and Richard Sherman was beginning to do that. What is going on in Seattle, best you can tell? Yeah, it is a full rebuild, um, and great teams usually don't do that. They usually don't completely dismantle and start over. Um, you know, sort of accept the Patriots. I mean, this is more extreme than, than what the Patriots have done, and some of it's health-related. Cliff Averill, Cam Chancellor, health-related. Neither of those guys expected to return. But, you know, releasing Richard Sherman and um, – you know, letting Paul Richardson go. I mean, these are these are significant moves uh, for a team that has a whole new coaching staff, too. I mean, this is an absolute restart for Seattle. The only thing that's the same is Pete Carroll, John Schneider, and Russell Wilson, and a couple other things. But those are the important things. What I'm really interested in is every year, like let's say the Patriots, every year we talk about with the Patriots, they're losing everyone. Page, everyone's fleeing the Patriots. They never re-sign anyone. Um, they're going to go downhill. Well, and then, of course, always they're fine. So maybe it's the same in Seattle. Like, are they able to do what the Patriots do, which is completely dismantle and let everyone expensive go and retool with cheaper, younger guys by drafting? Well, I actually don't know the answer to that, but I think they're going to be okay. Ian Rappaport joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, and I'd agree with you. Uh, I, I want to see it to believe it, that Seattle is going to be – completely uh dismantled with the exception of i guess baldwin and and uh and russell wilson i i do need to see it to believe it there's still bobby wagner there earl thomas yeah. do, you, do you think earl thomas goes by draft day do you think he's gone too? i don't i really don't um yeah. and you know at the risk of being old takes exposed or whatever um it is in my head it's almost impossible to do first of all they want him there so i know like the cowboys called the Seahawks and talked about a possible trade. I, from my understanding, the conversation did not get very far. See, you know, look, you can trade for anyone. So the fact that they have the conversation, Seattle always has the conversation, right? So it's going to take a first rounder plus, plus Earl's going to need a new contract. because He's going into the final year of his deal. Um, I just, you know, really good players who make a lot of money and are good and are not old, almost never get traded. And, He's 28. I mean, I just, 
I don't see it. I think it's going to be too expensive, and I think Seattle wants to keep them. Ian Rappaport, uh, let's discuss the uh, the current situation with uh, rookie quarterbacks coming in. Uh, Josh Rosen spun it yesterday and uh, did well. Baker Mayfield was joining me at the top of hour number three, spun it two days ago and fared well. Uh, Darnold is next week. Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson to come. The phrase that pays right now in the 2018 non-playing season is the term bridge quarterback. Everybody likes it. I mean, I should make up T-shirts. Everybody's got one. Jets have two of them, actually. So uh, what do you think it looks like right now, top of the draft? I would say um, I probably am like very few people. Um, I'm not convinced that the Browns are taking a quarterback at, at one. I mean, I know everyone sort of thinks they must because they passed last year. I'm not sure, from my understanding, that they are. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced that they're in love with any of these quarterbacks. They may still may take one, but I just I'm not sure. And Saquon Barkley, if he is a once in a generation back, which it seems is the case, I think they may take him. And if that happens, then the real drama starts because then the Giants will have every quarterback on the board at two, and do they just auction off the pick? To the Colts auction off the pick at three. You know the Bills are going to try to come up. You know, are the Broncos going to take a quarterback after paying Case Keenum $18 million? I mean, it is like going to be one of the most fun draft drama situations that I can remember because everyone could trade with everyone and everyone could take a quarterback, it seems. Who do you think the Bills have in mind here, Ian? Because they, you don't just trade Cordy Glenn to move up to 12 just because, period. You're moving up to 12 because you know you've got to move maybe up even higher to convince someone top five to trade with you. Who do you think that they've gone up there? It's not like they're going to go up there to just say, well, if either one of these three are around, we're happy. Who do you think they've targeted? No, I would imagine they have an idea. Um, I will say this. Uh, I don't know for sure, so I'm definitely not going to you know, pretend to – to have, have the, the insight right now for a long way from there. Yep. Um, but I will say this. It's interesting to me that the Bills, in a very, very stealth fashion, went out and hired Brian Dayball this year. I think a lot of people assumed he was going to be a New England taking over for Josh McDaniels. Um, and the Bills just kind of very secretly hired him. Um, and it's nice that he's from there and everything, but – he worked with a college quarterback and ran a lot of spread concepts this past year. That was interesting. It's obviously something they wanted. We're going to see Baker Mayfield probably go in the top five. Are those things related? Did they go out and hire Brian Dayball so he could help bring a college system to Buffalo and then go get Baker Mayfield? Uh, I don't know, but these are the kinds of things that I've been pondering. Dayball being, uh, again, going from court, being part of the uh, Patriots' uh, overtime win in the Super Bowl over Atlanta, only to go to Alabama and be part of Alabama, its right. overtime win in Atlanta. <laughs> right. And now he's in western New York. That's an interesting uh, trying to put two and two together there. Uh, last one for you. Who's still out there? Who's still out there? What's the biggest story you think that's still out there, Ian? Uh it's to me. This is about, with all due respect to to Preston Brown and those kinds of dudes, yes. just found with Cincinnati, by the way. Uh, this is about Dominican Sue and the Honey Badger, uh, and you know, there's some good players, some Morgan Burnett and um, you know Kenny Vaccaro, some good safety still available. But this really is about Sue and the Honey Badger. I mean, those are the two top names now. You know, I assume Crabtree Crabtree could get done today in Baltimore. Um, I could definitely see that. Um, and if that happens, then it's really just about these two. And it's been a the fastest free agency I can remember, a legit frenzy, just didn't quite happen on the days we thought. Right. Um, but once you get those two guys off the board, um, then it is really on to draft season. And is it true or just a convenient excuse uh, of teams saying that, uh, from what I'm hearing, that they won't sign Kaepernick, even though there was a video of him winging it around and looking really good and fit and his arm is great, that they won't, uh, he's got no shot of being uh, signed uh, until he drops his grievance against the National Football League. You hearing that? The, I, I've heard it the sort of the other way, um, that if he got signed, he would then drop his grievance. Not I've heard. I know that. I've talked to his lawyers about it. Um, if he got signed, he would drop his grievance. Maybe it does have to be the other way. I've not, to me, uh, and it's kind of weird, I guess, knowing where I work, but to me, the grievance thing was always odd. 
I would, you know, just basically put up a wall and sort of stopped him from getting hired. So um, I would I would imagine it makes it much easier if he does drop his grievance. No. But he's gotten a lot of advice from a lot of different people, and um, it's just been interesting to me which advice he decides to take, including doing this grievance. Well, I mean, if he thought there was no chance of him being hired, then why not file a grievance? You know, I mean, and, and that's why I'm saying convenient to say that there's a wall. Yeah, but— but but I, I I think there I mean there was a couple of different points last year when when I thought he was going to get a job that thing with the Ravens like that was real I I thought that was going to happen um and quarterbacks go down all the time I mean if I I, I think there was still a shot midway through the season last year that he was going to get signed um, but yeah I mean the grievance obviously makes it very hard very Ian, hard Ian thanks for the time uh. Hey, I can't wait to see you on Free Agency Frenzy at 1 Eastern time, uh, just in about 15 minutes' time. I would watch, but I'm doing my own show. Okay, you know, but I, I'll have you on. I'll have you on, and everybody it's else should. Double screens. There People you go. Use two screens now. It is the 21st century. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> Thank the call. You. At Rap Sheet. Check it out. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.